Let's talk about expanding your local network storage in your Synology, your NAS, etc. with some big hard drives. So I've got that awesome DS1821 Synology. That's my home NAS. I use it for a bunch of stuff, all kinds of file backups, family photos, and all of that. I use it for all the YouTube channel stuff, of course, uh, backing up my projects, re retaining all of the video and pictures and graphical things that I do here. And I serve local media on it, physical media rips and that sort of thing. So it's an eight bay, I've got four drive. I've been running it up to four drives now, filling the thing up and it was time to pop another one in. So I figured I'd make this video, talk about like why, why I choose hard drive brands that I choose and the process, why I like Synology so much really, the process of putting a drive in and expanding your storage array and I think why Synology is just the, the, the aces basically. So I've got the eight bay, again there's four drives in it right now. One of the things to keep in mind with Synology is the size of a single volume can go up to about 108 terabytes. And so with eight bays, if you're using one drive for protection, uh, fault tolerance, uh, parity and such, you wanna be targeting 16 to 18 terabyte drives so that you'll saturate a full, uh, a full storage volume once all of the drives are populated. And if you need to go bigger than that, of course, you, they have add-on expanders or I guess you just buy a completely separate NAS. Um, in this case, I'm going with an 18. So I've got two 12s and two 18s in there, adding another 18 to the family. And this time I went with a Seagate Iron Wolf Pro 18 terabyte. Now there's a lot of options for hard drives out there. And I think there's a lot of kind of misinformation as well. In the past, certain brands have been really good. And in the past, certain brands have been kind of um, looked down upon by the tech communities and enthusiasts that would be using them to set up things like media servers and file servers and all of that. In my experience, I've had pretty good uh, track record with any drives, um, any manufacturers of drives that I put into any of my NASs, including Seagate, Hitachi, Western Digital. There's a bit of a mix in there right now. Sometimes, or in a lot of cases, what I might buy changes depending on what, what's the best price uh, on the drives at the time that I need to buy one. So I probably pulled the trigger on this a little early. We're a couple weeks ahead of like Black Friday. These drives will probably be cheaper in a few weeks, but I don't want to wait another month-ish um, to, to put it in there. This was down under 300 bucks for 18 terabytes. That's a good enough price to me, especially for a retail drive, not a shucked drive. So this will have its proper warranty coverage um, on it. But Seagate Iron Wolf, Seagate the Exos Enterprise Drives, Western Digital Reds, and, and others made for uh, Enterprise, always on 24-7 use or made for NAS use. I don't think you can really go wrong with any of them. And if you go the shucking route, you buy the USB or network external enclosures and you tear them apart to get the drive out. That can often be the cheapest way to go, but you're probably not getting warranty coverage or protection on the drive when you take it out that way. In my experience, if something were to go wrong with it, getting it back in there could be could be a pain. So I just generally prefer to buy independent retail drives. So let's get this thing in the Synology itself and then we'll set up the uh, set up the Synology software for their hybrid RAID and expand the volume to put this drive into the storage pool. So one of the reasons I love these so much is they're toolless. We basically just click the drive tray out, slide her right out, and we're going to snap that drive directly in here. No screws, no tools, nothing. We need the plug end of the drive facing out and kind of the circuit board side facing down. We snap these side clips off. One, two. We set this drive right in there. Perfect fit. And we snap these right back in. Snap, snap. Other side. Got to give them a little bit of a push to get the holes to kind of push force and align. And there we go. So with that, we have a snug drive fit ready to plug in. We'll just slide it right in, click it, lock it. And then the NAS will pick it up and we'll jump over to the Synology software 
and set this guy up. All right, so we'll see if I can one hand this. I just fill my drives left to right into the open bays and slide this guy in, snap it down and give it a second. It'll power it up, spin it up and be good to go. One other tip, I do like to keep track of like what drives I put in what bays. So I always like take a photo of the drive itself, serial number, all the manufacturer information and kind of keep a log for myself what drive is in what bay and you know where did I buy it from, when did I buy it and all of that just in case something ever does happen with the drive itself. I know for sure which drive is which drive. There we go. Green lights coming on. All right, so let's get this drive added to the to the existing storage pool. I'm logged into my NAS, that Synology NAS here on the local network just using Safari on my MacBook Pro. You can see I've got a couple warnings going. Warning, system is now in warning stat status. Please go to storage manager for more information. We're basically getting getting lower on storage. Got another notice here. The system detected a newly inserted drive four minutes ago. That is not in use. You can go to storage manager to manage this drive. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to storage manager, open this up and see warning. Issues have occurred with storage pool one. Please go to the storage page and refer to the suggestion of the corresponding storage pool. Again, the problem ultimately here is we're just kind of running low on space. Get this spooled up a little bit to see it a little easier so we can see volume one storage pool currently sitting at 36.7 terabytes, 30.4 used, a little over 80%. So Synology will start kind of giving you the warnings, capacity warnings, when you've exceeded 80% uh, of your pool. If we look at the picture here, We've got four drives, or uh, five drives actually pictured, four in the pool right now. Five has the green outline, but it has a black kind of background. So if we go down here deeper into the pool, we can see the pool here, volume one is running out of available capacity. This will affect system performance. Please delete unnecessary data or expand the pool. And if I look at the volume specifically, all right, as we can see, we've got one volume defined here that I would intend to continue adding drives to until we saturate that 108 terabyte of storage space. And at the bottom here, again, just the list of drives looking at them. You can see I've got a couple different models in here, a couple Western Digital, 12 terabytes, and then lately here, been buying the Seagates. I think three and four are those Exos Enterprise drives. And now this one is the Iron Wolf. So how do we, how do we add this drive to our pool? So how do we add the drive to the pool? Very easy, select the storage pool, collect the dot, 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 that's up here. We can add drive, change the RAID type, replace a drive and remove. So if you need to do any type of maintenance with your drives, with your Synology, you follow the, basically follow the wizards here, follow the guidance and it'll tell you what to do, what to put in and all of that. So let's go add drive. There's our drive, drive number five. Notice the size is 16.4 terabytes. There's a 1000 versus 1024 hard drive size disparity. So keep in mind any hard drive that you buy, the actual addressable usable storage of that drive is going to be about 10% less than the uh, published amount of space on the drive. So an 18 terabyte drive gives you 16.4 terabytes usable. It's telling us once we add this, our estimated capacity of the pool will go up to 54 5 terabytes. So I've got that checkbox hit. I'm going to hit next. Uh, please note the following regarding the selected drive not listed in the product, not listed in the product compatibility list. We're good. That's fine. And what do we want to do here? Well, we want to expand the volume by using unallocated capacity. Please do. We're not making a separate volume, breaking it up. And so confirm settings, storage pool one, add the drives. We've got our new estimate and expand the volume by using unallocated capacity. Yes, all the data on the newly added drive will be erased. Are you sure you wanna continue? Absolutely. It's a brand new drive, there's nothing on it that I need to worry about. And there we go, so adding drives. So it's gonna run through a few stages here and this is gonna take a little while. So getting some uh, initialization, like the pre-formatting, loading the file system, all of that's pretty quick. But then there ends up being like an integration step that's required to actually make the storage fully uh, addressable, usable, basically expand the pool, right, to include the, the, disk, the drive in its protection 
in its its parity and all of that. I am using just the the regular Synology Hybrid Hybrid RAID SHR, which allows you to do stuff like this. That's the key. It lets you manipulate your pool, expand your pool. It lets you integrate drives of different sizes, and so this will actually take on the order of I would say a day, maybe a couple of days before the entire process is done. But at the end of it, I'll be up there around 54, 55 terabytes of space, ready to keep protecting, backing up, storing, serving media, serving media, and all that cool stuff. So there you go, some recommendations and a look at local network addressable storage using a Synology, how easy it is to expand your array, add some storage, as your needs, your storage needs, and all of that grow. So I'll report back with a more definitive uh, measure of time for just how long it takes for that uh, for that pool to be fully expanded and addressable with the new drive. But I really love Synology. I think they're super super powerful. But at the same time, if you if you're not like really needing it for advanced IT stuff, you can do some really advanced IT stuff with a Synology. But if your needs are pretty simple. I still think it's one of the best brands solutions out there for this type of thing. Their UIs, their interfaces, if you're just doing the basic stuff, to me, I, I think are still very digestible, very understandable. There's a plethora of information, um, how-tos, guides, and all of that about using Synology because it's such a popular brand. So scale's really great. Simple needs, large needs, small storage, large storage, and everything in between. I do look forward to the day where maybe we're dealing with like 20 terabyte SSDs at the same kind of prices these spinners work at. So we could plug these drives in and all of this pool management and everything would be just so much faster and more efficient. It's just a, a byproduct of the size and the scale and that spinning mechanical kind of holdback that it takes so long to integrate uh, or expand storage and integrate new drives and all of that. That's where some of the risk comes in as well because it's nice having a drive of protection, but even if you lost a drive and you had to replace it, you pull the old one out, you put the new one in, you let the Synology run its process, that's that's the buckle in your seat time because if something happens there, if you've got one drive of protection and something happens in that rebuilding phase, you're, you're out of luck. That's why a lot of people are why you can run Synology Hybrid RAID with two drives of protection, but then you're giving up more storage trade-offs and all of that. If I had a 12 bay, I would certainly be using two drives of protection. I think one is okay on the eight, but cool stuff. Sound off in the comments. If you have any questions, are you, do you use Synology? Do you have a home NAS? What do you use it for? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Share your thoughts and experiences. Check out the, the Check out the other videos here about setting up local servers for home theater media use and ripping your physical disks and all of that. Got a whole bunch of making MKV process videos and more on the channel. Otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff like subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share the video. And if you'd like to support the channel more directly so I can buy some more hard drives when I need them look down in the description below there's super thanks amazon affiliate links and all of that and if you want some drives again get them from amazon please use my affiliate links there as well thanks so much for watching coming back for more home theater discussion and fun